You guys, we're back. So tonight, what we're gonna try to do, a little bit late start here, is, I don't know if y'all noticed it, but this flywheel is missing a dowel pin. Now, let me say the crankshaft was missing a dowel pin. And the hole, like, wasn't really even, looks like one got broken off in there. Let's just, let's just leave it at that in the course of the life of this poor engine here. So what we have are some new dowel pins because one of them, I guess is totally missing and you'd never get one in there anyway. And one, if I remember right, it looks a little bit hogged up. So what I have here is I brought some metric drill bits home from work. That's a six millimeter hole. All the rest have them in there. They're just different depths. And I think, like I said, one of them's pretty jacked up. So what we're going to do is we are going to, and it's a partial, I mean it's not like it's weird, the hole's like a moon. So we're going to try to get that thing out of there so we can really truly get a dowel pin in there. We're going to use the flywheel as like a drill guide. Of course, you all probably cannot see anything right here. some tools and we'll measure that depth and see if we're uh, see if we're at the right depth right. new dowel pin is about 472 inch wise we'll put the caliper in the hole like that Try to get it to kind of sit down flat. And I'm getting like five, oh, I'm going six, 625. So, I believe we have the remnants of whatever we had in there out of there. So, now we should be able to. I just hand tighten this crank or this uh, flywheel down on here. So I'm hoping I can pop this off here. are missing hole and some of the other ones are stuck in the flywheel I'm gonna to try to knock them out and put them in the in the end of the crank like they're supposed to be so, let me see how successful I am with that and we'll bring you back and we're gonna do a trial torque run on this thing okay so I'm gonna properly try to torque this gland nut the way it's supposed to be so what I've done is I've, since I don't have a torque wrench, it goes 350 foot-pounds and apparently nobody else does either. I looked at possibly trying to purchase a torque multiplier, but they're like $600 for something I'm going to use like once. So I went online, did a little research, I was thinking I could probably just put a piece of pipe on my torque wrench. But I found a calculator that showed you where you can add an extension to a torque wrench and what the mass is going to be. And I've done all that math, and if anybody's interested, I could probably put this link 
in the description. So the spec is 326 to 352. I put 330 in the equation and came up using feet to 198. It seemed awful high, but I went into the app and used it on my phone using inches and came up with 200. So I think, you know, I, uh, I tend to think we're in the ballpark. Doesn't seem completely out of control. So what I've done is I tried this with a piece of flat the other day and it deflected too much. So taking a piece of scrap angle iron I got from work, drilled two holes in it eight inches apart, have my snap-on torque wrench set at 200 foot-pounds, and I have a new iron gasket in there, which is supposedly the right way you're supposed to measure your end play. So I'm going to measure it with a new one. Since I had to order the dowel pins, I ordered a new engine pad, sound, uh, engine compartment sound pad. That gasket seemed like a waste to use when to throw it away, but it was like a dollar and thirty cents. So I'll, I'll sacrifice that. So here we go. Let's see what 200 foot-pounds looks like on this thing. Now I just about screwed up because that's only going to be 200 foot-pounds because I have not. That's 200, because that's the stock torque wrench. What I forgot to tell you about, was this extension I made. So this is some scrap stuff, piece of scrap metal from work. And I bought a socket and then an adapter at Lowe's. So what this is gonna do, is we're going to take that extension put our torque wrench in the socket now ideally for this to work perfectly everything needs to be perfectly straight so let me get you propped up back here in case we need anything for the uh, for the corner after all this. So there we go. There's our setup. Angle iron, the torque extension. This thing could explode, who knows. Here we go. We're gonna try to get 330 pound feet of torque on this nut. Ideally, this needs to be exactly straight. So the torque wrench is set at 200. Wish I had a shorter extension. Which, hang on a second. At one point I did. All right, well, let's not hunt for that now. All right, here goes. All right, that should be 330 pound feet. So what we're gonna do, that's tight. I'm gonna pull that off and we'll check the end play again. If it's good, I'm gonna pull the flywheel back off, go ahead and put the seal in, and when we put it back, put it back on the stand, assemble the rest of the engine, before we put it in the car, we'll put the flywheel on and torque it. Okay, so we're still torqued on there. I set up with a different magnetic base indicator. This one's magnetic. I put it on this little lifter now that it's on there. So we are at zero. So we are still right at six thousands. Maybe a little bit under, which is actually perfect. Anyway, with the combination of shims, I couldn't make it any better. It'd be 
go up one size or down one size, you'd be outside the range. So I think we're gonna be good to go. So I think what we'll do, pull this off there, we will stick the, uh, I can work while I'm talking, stick the uh, um, flywheel seal in there, that'll keep dirt out, get that done, and then we will, well, let me not get too far ahead of myself. I gotta get that thing back off there. So let me get that thing back off there, and then we'll put the seal in, and then we'll put it back on the engine stand. Okay, better hurry. My battery's crapping out. Got it back up on the stand. We put the front engine supports back on. We'll go ahead and think the next step would be installing pistons. So, I've already done this before unfortunately, but anyway I left the clip in so the arrow, I'm pretty sure, points to the front of the car. We'll verify that. The clip is still in this side. Now we should be able just to push the wrist pin out. And as I say that, it doesn't want to move. So I'm going to give it a little tool type persuasion. I did. Apparently it wasn't enough. Push her a little more. Yeah, okay. So we'll shove that out. This is our number one. Now I need to line up. Everything. So that should have dropped into the rod. Yes, it did. Push that all the way in. And what did I do with the clip? I was here a minute ago. I know it was. There it is. Let me verify you all can see this. It's not like it's super close anyway. But it's kind of an external, well, I guess internal snap ring. Put that in the bore. Pop it in the groove. Okay, I'm good with that. And before the battery dies and y'all are, I'm doing a bunch of work for nothing. Y'all are wondering why you got a black screen. We will uh, go ahead and get the rest of the pistons on and then we'll put the cylinders on, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, thanks for watching.